Hi and welcome to the 95th Hammer Tutorial. Today we're going to be making dynamic lights. I'm going to be using Portal 2 as it supports the most features with the method we're going to use, which is the ambi-projected texture. Other games support this, but there are some errors in Counter-Strike and such. Now, there are some limitations which we will go over, such as having one light active at a time. If you, have, if you try to enable a second light, it will disable the other one, which we'll see here. So we're just going to create a standard light, one that doesn't move, that just casts dynamic shadows. So we're going to start by making an ambi-projected texture. We're going to name it Light 1. And it's going to chill behind this metal grate over here. Some textures are able to cast shad uh, dynamic shadows. There is a parameter that you have to add um, to get the shadows to cast. A little bit of Google Magic will get you that information. I'm not going to give it to you because I'm mean. Now we have a couple of settings here. We have the far Z and the near Z. This is the Z clipping for the light. Now if I change the far Z, you'll notice that the distance shrinks. Now you want this to be as short as you can. Have it without it bleeding over too much because every little bit that's not calculated is definitely costing you. I mean, that's not seen but calculated. That's what I meant. Now the near Z is when the light starts projecting from the entity. We'll see this cone, but if we make this larger, we make this 32, you'll see that the, the super shaded in area has now become uh, moved forward a little bit. So if someone's standing in between this area, they won't cast a shadow. This is useful for if you're placing it in props, which we'll do in a minute. Under flags, we have two things we have enabled and always update. For this one, we want it to just be enabled because it's going to be the starting light. We have a simple field of view setting, which you can just change. Um, the field of view constraints are 1 through 179. The game doesn't do well with 180 um, degree radius from what I've seen, and it cannot do a full 360 projection um, because the source engine blows. So we're just going to give this a tighter FOV. You'll just learn to work around the constraints of this. Everyone does. So I'm going to 45. Um, you want shadows enabled? Yes. This is the most important thing to get the shadows. Their shadow quality, um, high and low, do the same thing. Brightness scale, same thing. Color transition, amount of time it takes to change when you input a color change via and output. Super simple. Now, simple projection, just leave this off. You don't need it. That's all I'm going to say. Now over here we have QB the Cube. He is, um the star of this tutorial because he's a boss so we're going to give him a child and we're going to name his child lighty the light so we're going to create we're going to create a new envy projected texture a lighty the light a lighty the light okay we're not going to have him start on but we are going to have always update which means it's a moving light we're going to actually parent lighty the light to cube the cube so now I'm going to place Lighty the Light inside QB the Cube, and we're going to use our near Z clipping to get the correct angles. So the actual M projected texture is at the back of him, but the light's not going to start until the front. So I kind of want it to be like this little circle here is the flashlight part. Um, so I'm going to set the near Z to 28. Nope, not enough. 32, not enough. 35, perfect. Um, we don't want to go off that. Now these do sample from texture alpha, not from collision models, so that's something to keep in mind. You can really do a lot more with that. I'm going to make this be a blue light, and I'm going to set its uh, intensity to 600. For the texture at the bottom, you can change this. Some games do not have the, the smart edit options not added in the FGD, but you can always manually add it with smart edit off under the key name texture name and the value that's the texture you want. Hit apply, hit OK. Now we need to activate uh, Lighty the Light when you pick QB the Cube. So on player pickup, Lighty the Light, turn on. Now when you activate another light, it's going to turn off the previous light. And then I shall see you. I'm going to compile this and then I will see you in game. Alright, so here we are in Portal 2. Um, we have the spinning metal crate texture and the shadows being dynamically casted in the background. We also have QB the Cube here, who's being a flippin' champ casting shadows, like, like a boss. 
And I'm going to pick up Cupid Cube and see how it shut off the other one. We didn't even tell it to do that. Source Engine's such a nice guy, it shut off the other and reject the texture for you. Your move, Source Engine, you're a nice guy. So I'm going to I'm gonna place Cupid Cube right here. And then I'm going... Oop, oop, oop. Place Cupid Cube there. And I'm going to no-clip into here. And we can see we have this main texture. And I'm going to go in third person. Oh, there we go. Yeah, look at Shell. Shell's a superstar. Get a breakdance on. <laughs> okay. Well, that'll about do it for custom... I mean, for dynamic shadows in uh, Source Engine. It's definitely not its strong point, but if you find a way to work around um, the limitations, you can definitely create a grade A product. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.